Hello future AES assessors. Welcome to the AES program overview. In this video, we'll introduce you to the AES mission and AES courses and explain how you can become qualified to conduct a CISA assessment. Let's get started. During this video, we'll explain the AES program and its training and qualification processes. Then we'll present an overview of each AES training course. CPG, CRR, EDM, HVA, RVA, Vader, and IMR. First, let's look at the AES program. AES mission is to train a workforce of prepared and qualified assessors who understand CISA cybersecurity assessment methodologies and the sequential steps required to conduct a specific CISA assessment. AES offers free training to all stakeholder communities throughout critical infrastructures, including federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, and public and private contractors and vendors. This approach cultivates a national cybersecurity community standard of consistency and repeatability and improves the contribution of assessors to national data collection efforts. AES achieves its mission by translating CISA cybersecurity assessment requirements into a student training regimen in each AES course. The AES process fosters consistent knowledge, skills, and abilities throughout national cybersecurity assessor communities, improving the ability to offer assessment findings in a consistent and repeatable manner. Now that we've reviewed the AES mission and program focus, let's look briefly at each AES training course and goal of each assessment type. The 3-Hour Cybersecurity Performance Goals, or CPG course, evaluates whether a minimum baseline of cybersecurity technologies and practices are implemented in information technology and operational technology environments in small and medium-sized organizations. In the 5-Day Cyber Resilience Review and External Dependency Management course, or CRREDM course, Participants learn to conduct an interview-based assessment to evaluate an organization's operational resilience and cybersecurity practices, the CRR process, and to evaluate an organization's management of external dependencies, the EDM process. The High Value Asset, or HVA course, currently focuses on non-Tier 1 High Value Assets. During the five-day course, participants learn to assess the HVA security architecture to identify technical concerns that could expose the organization to risk. During the 5-Day Risk and Vulnerability Assessment, or RVA course, participants learn to collect data through on-site assessments, then combine with national threat and vulnerability information to provide an organization with actionable remediation recommendations prioritized by risk. In the Validated Architecture Design Review, or VADER, course, students review architecture and design, system configuration, and log files, then analyze network traffic to develop a detailed and sophisticated representation and analysis of the communication flows, and relationships between devices to identify anomalous and potentially suspicious communication flows. The Vader course is five days. The On-Demand Incident Management Review, or IMR course, teaches students to evaluate the processes used to identify and analyze events, declare incidents, determine a response, and improve an organization's incident management capability. Let's look at the four AES assessment roles and the knowledge, skills, and tasks that each require. How do we know what they are? We mapped each assessor role to the workforce framework for cybersecurity, called the NICE framework, which gives us a deep understanding of the required knowledge, skills, and tasks needed. First, let's look at the assessment lead, or AL, role. The AL serves as primary assessment team POC and leads the assessment team. The AL manages the overall assessment execution and debriefs and delivers the assessment report. The assessments that have an AL role are listed here. The technical lead, or TL role, is responsible for overall assessment execution and leads the technical exchange meeting, or TEM. The TL also writes most of the assessment report and supports meetings throughout the assessment. The assessments that have a TL role are listed here. The operator, or OP role, leads the penetration test and is responsible for the testing results appendix of the assessment report. The OP contributes to other portions of the report. The OP supports meetings throughout the assessment. For acceptance to an AES course as an OP candidate, an applicant must pass an additional pre-course exam, the Operator Skills Test, or OST. The assessments that have an OP role are listed here. To apply for the Sector Specific Subject Matter Expert, or SSME role, a candidate must have a minimum of 5 years operational technology, or OT, experience in security operational technology in a specific sector for example, in oil and gas, electric, water, chemical, or manufacturing industries in an operations environment. The assessments that have an SSME role are listed here. 
Take a moment to review the last bullet of each defined assessor role that highlights every AES course applicable to each AES assessor role. Now let's look at the AES prerequisites that all applicants need to complete to be a good candidate for any assessor role. These are the minimum skills needed. Although AES doesn't require applicants to have any certifications, if you do have one or more of these, you have a preferred profile for an assessor role. Because of its unique tasks, the operator role requires additional skills. Now, let's review the AES training process. The AES training process consists of seven steps, divided into two areas, prerequisites and course. Let's take a deeper dive into each individual step. AES requires all applicants to review this video, and slides as their orientation to the program. After you review the AES program video and slides, visit the Moodle Learning Management System, or LMS, and register for an AES training account. Consult the AES Moodle Quick Start Guide for registration and other LMS instructions. To confirm that you have a baseline cybersecurity knowledge to be successful in an AES course, you must complete and pass the Candidate Evaluation, or CE, exam. You have three attempts to pass the multiple choice question test with a score 70% or higher. The CE is a mandatory step. The CE is applicable to every AES assessor role. Before taking the CE exam, you must read and acknowledge the AES Code of Ethics and Compliance. After you pass the CE, your results are valid for six months. If you want to become an AES operator, before you take the CE exam, you must pass the Operator Skills Test, or OST exam, which evaluates your penetration testing skills. The OST is mandatory for all AES operators. Now that you've passed your CE exam and OST for operator candidates, it's class time. Most courses are five days of instruction. All courses feature exercises to give you an opportunity to practice assessment activities. Class attendance is monitored. You're now ready for the final exam. The AES capstone exam covers all aspects of a specific assessment. It consists of a multiple choice, machine scorable test, and for some courses, a final report. After you complete the AES capstone exam, you will receive an email with good news, you passed, or not so good news, you did not pass. When you complete the course and pass, you receive a certificate of qualification in your Moodle account. Congratulations! You passed your AES capstone exam and received your certificate of qualification. The certificate means that you're qualified as an AES assessor in your training course role. Let's take an in-depth look at each AES training course. First, the Cybersecurity Performance Goals, or CPG, training course. The CPG course is designed to empower students to facilitate a CPG assessment using the Cybersecurity Evaluation Tool, or CSET. CPGs are a prioritized subset of information technology and operational technology cybersecurity practices. Critical infrastructure owners and operators can implement them to meaningfully reduce the likelihood and impact of known risks and adversary techniques. The goals were informed by existing cybersecurity frameworks and guidance as well as by real-world threats and adversary tactics, techniques, and procedures that CISA and its government and industry partners observed. By implementing these goals, owners and operators reduce risks to both critical infrastructure operations and to the American people. The assessment process depends on in-person interviews leveraging CSET to track responses, conduct posture analysis, and generate a report. The assessment lead role supports the CPG. These are the tasks and responsibilities of the AL for the CPG. Although all AL goals are the same, the individual activities change according to the assessment type. Next, let's review the ASCRREDM training course. The AESCRR assessment is part of a U.S. Department of Homeland Security initiative intended to help the nation's critical infrastructure providers understand their operational resilience and ability to manage cyber risk. Assesses enterprise programs and practices across a range of 10 domains including risk management, incident management, service continuity, and others. Is designed to measure existing organizational resilience as well as provide a gap analysis for improvement based on recognized best practices.
the AES-EDM assessment has a format similar to CRR. Part of a U.S. Department of Homeland Security initiative intended to help the nation's critical infrastructure providers evaluate the external dependency management supply chain cybersecurity practices of critical infrastructure. Assesses enterprise programs and practices across three domains, including relationship formation, relationship management and governance, and service protection and sustainment. Take a moment to review the assessment lead role for CRREDM. The AES-CRREDM is a five-day course. Here's the agenda, day one, background, resilience management, critical service, CRR and EDM methodology. Day two, assessment process and assessment domains. Day three, assessment domains. Day four, final report preparation and debrief. Day five, conclusion and capstone exam. Now, let's examine the ASHVA training course. The ASHVA assessment is part of a CISA initiative intended to help government departments and agencies understand their operational resilience and ability to manage cyber risk. Assess is a high-value asset security environment and organizational processes through interviews, artifact examination, and technical testing. It's designed to understand the HVA security architecture, to understand its resilience as well as to provide recommendations for improvement. A word about M1903 specific to the non-Tier 1 HVA community. M1903 is the 2018 memorandum strengthening the cybersecurity of federal agencies by enhancing the High Value Asset Program. The M1903 Supplemental Guidance offers an in-depth overview of the mandate to participate in the AES-HVA course to support the non-Tier 1 HVA community. Visit M1903 for additional content on the AES and HVA training regimen, located in the Homeland Security Information Network. HVA community documents are located on OMB Max. Take a moment and review the ASHVA assessment roles. The ASHVA is a five-day course. Here's the agenda. Day 1, Background, HVA Roles, Methodology, Planning. Day 2, Methodology, Execution, Discussion Topics. Day 3, Methodology, Execution, Post-Execution. Day 4, Methodology, Post-Execution. Day 5, Capstone. Now, let's look at the AES-RVA course in depth. The AES-RVA assessment is part of a CISA initiative to lead the national effort to understand and manage cyber and physical risk to our critical infrastructure, assesses organizations' alignment with information security laws, regulations, policies, and standards by conducting collaborative and independent operational testing and assessments, provides customer organizations with an understanding of their operational cybersecurity risk and posture and provides DHS with vital situational awareness, delivers the RVA assessment final report. The operator role supports the RVA. The RVA is the parent training course for all operators in any assessment. All penetration testers will be trained through the RVA, but qualified in any assessment. The AES RVA is a five-day course. Here's the agenda. Day one, background, RVA roles, methodology, planning, execution. Day two, methodology, post-assessment. Day three, team capstone exercise introduction. Day four, team capstone exercise. Day five, capstone out brief presentation and final report. Let's look at the AES Vader training course in depth. 
the AES Fader assessment empowers assessors to evaluate operational technology systems within critical infrastructure networks for secure design and operational intent. Encompasses architecture and design review, system configuration and log file review, along with sophisticated analysis of network traffic. Develops a detailed representation of the communications, flows, and relationships between devices designed to identify anomalous and potentially suspicious communication flows. Verifies that successful students can assess the design of the system accurately, and to inform organizational leadership how to manage the risk effectively, which is inherent in its selected design methods and cybersecurity solutions. The AES Vader assessment also depends on in-person interviews, documentation review, and in-depth technical analysis. Uses best practices, including the Purdue model, NIST 853, and the CISA recommended secure architecture. Not intended to be a comprehensive audit, instead, it helps an organization identify the most significant weaknesses and make recommendations to mitigate them to improve an organization's overall cybersecurity posture. The assessment lead and sector subject matter expert SSME roles support the Vader. These are the tasks and responsibilities of the AL and SSME for the Vader. The AES Vader is a five-day course. Here is the agenda. Day 1. Pre-execution activities scoping, intake, OSINT. Day 2. Network analysis and execution activities, validation of captures, interviewing techniques and subjects. Day 3. Execution activities and post-execution, interviews, outbrief, reporting. Day 4. Test and capstone. Day 5. Hot wash and feedback. Finally, let's review the ASIMR training course. The IMR assessment is part of a U.S. Department of Homeland Security initiative to help the nation's critical infrastructure providers assess and provide a measure of an organization's event and incident handling capabilities. Assesses enterprise programs and practices across a range of six domains. The assessment lead role supports the IMR. These are the tasks and responsibilities of the AL for the IMR. Although all AL goals are the same, the individual activities change according to the assessment type. The AES IMR is an on-demand course. Here's the agenda. Part 1. Introduction, Critical Services, Background, Pre-Assessment, Facilitation. Part 2. Event Handling, Incident Response, Post-Incident, Organizational Capabilities, Protection and Sustainment, Preparation for Incident Response. Part 3. Reporting, IMR Vignettes, Capstone. Thank you for your interest in CISA AES training program. We hope you now have a better understanding on how to participate in AES training, how to become qualified as an AES assessor, each of the six AES training courses and their assessment roles. For more information, email aestraining.hq.dhs.gov or visit cisa.gov slash AES for all AES resources and guides. For your reference, this is a list of the acronyms used in this video.